so many people ask, how do you go to the bathroom without fiber? Like if you're eating a strict carnivore diet without any fiber, like how, how does that all work? Yeah, and this is a very interesting question. There's, there's actually some research, which my buddy, Dr. Paul Mason talks about that people have fewer bowel complaints and less constipation if they eat a fiber-free diet. But this is not, see, and here's the problem. This is not ever going to get studied at the big universities because they firmly believe in their heart of hearts that you must have fiber or you're just going to die. So they would never, you know, the chairman of the Department of Nutrition at Harvard would never sanction a study and would definitely never fund a study with, with money to look at a fiber-free diet. So that's never going to be studied. So all we have to go on is the one study Dr. Paul Mason talks about in his YouTube videos. And then the, the anecdotal evidence that we have from tens of thousands of carnivores who are currently eating a carnivore diet. And what they say, almost without exception, is that my, my, my bowel habits get much better, much less intrusive into my life. There's less smell, there's less volume. I have my constipation I used to suffer from all the time goes completely away when I'm eating a zero fiber diet. So what you would think you would see if fiber is really so essential and really you have to eat it every day or bad things are going to happen to you, you should see in the carnivore groups and, and on Reddit, you should see these carnivores games saying, dude, I, I really love this carnivore diet. I love eating bacon and ribeye, but I've been constipated for a month or I developed colon cancer or I just, I can't, my, my, I'm so bloated and gassy. I can't continue this carnivore diet. You would see that kind of comment regularly in, in the carnivore groups, right? You'd have to because fiber is so essential that you would have a 90% dropout rate. People would do carnivore for a few months and say, I just can't do this anymore. My gut's so locked up. I'm, I'm in such pain. I've got to go back to eating fiber. But you never see those comments. You just don't ever see that comment in any of the carnivore places where carnivores get together. What you see is the exact opposite. And so if fiber is such a necessity, then either these carnivore groups are really censoring the people who have terrible gut symptoms because they're eating zero fiber. But I don't, I don't really believe that's what ha what's happening. I believe we're all honestly trying to rediscover, is it, is it okay to eat zero fiber? Is it safe? Is it, is it a doable thing? Is it sustainable? Mm -hmm. And tens of thousands of carnivores say, yeah, dude, I have zero gut problems or bowel problems with a carnivore diet. And that to me speaks more than like some sort of research article or some sort of study, like a real person with their actual experience means so much to me. Um, and I haven't experienced that myself, but uh, the number one question I am asked is what about high cholesterol? Like how does this whole carnivore diet work? And if someone has high cholesterol, like what, what does that mean? So about one third of people who eat a ketogenic or a carnivore diet will notice that their, their total cholesterol goes down. About one third of people will notice that their cholesterol doesn't change at all eating keto or carnivore versus the standard American crap. And about a third of people will notice that their total cholesterol and LDL cholesterol go up when they're eating what I consider to be a proper human diet. Uh, so first of all, the heart, uh, the fat heart hypothesis was just that a hypothesis that having high cholesterol uh, and eating lots of saturated fat would cause heart disease in humans. That is a hypothesis, which means a smart guy just came up with an idea and then he, he started researching that. The problem is, is that the, the really controlled research has never shown a absolute causation between eating a high cholesterol diet or a high fat diet and heart disease. In fact, the American Heart Association has stopped recommending a maximum intake of cholesterol in the diet. They don't even talk about that anymore. Uh, they've also pulled back and, and stopped saying that eating saturated fat will increase your risk of heart disease. The American Heart Association pulled that from their guidelines. But since they didn't have a press release on CNN and Fox News, the average person out there still thinks that eating diets rich in cholesterol and uh, fat will increase your risk of heart disease. But that's, the research has never shown that, never supported that, that hypothesis failed. But there are still many um, ignorant doctors and other healthcare providers out there 
who think that eating a high cholesterol diet will give you heart disease or think that eating a, a, a diet high in saturated fat will give you heart disease. But that's never been proven, never been shown. All the studies are very embarrassingly, they fail. And this has been happening since the 1960s. And some of this research has actually been hidden and, and not published in, a, in the large journal it should have been published in when they found that, oh, if you, if you replace the saturated fat found in butter and red meat if you, and eggs, if you replace that with a vegetable oil like corn oil, people actually get cancer more often and they actually have more heart disease. There were three studies like that that were done, huge control studies in humans that showed that, yeah, when you replace animal fat with vegetable fat, people get sicker quicker. Uh, and they just either weren't published at all or they were published in some obscure little journal that no, they, in a foreign language that nobody read. So nobody in the United States or indeed modern society, they've never heard that. And so they still believe the disproven myth that eating cholesterol and saturated fat will cause heart disease. And so now we have to shine the light of truth on this whole, oh, your total cholesterol is high. You're at increased risk of heart attack. Well, actually, when you look at the control research, it turns out that's, that's not true at all. When you look at the LDL cholesterol <clears throat> research that's done well and controlled, you either find a tiny, tiny increased risk or you don't find any risk at all. But when you look at research and you say, hey, what about having elevated blood sugar? What about having elevated insulin from eating too many carbohydrates? What if you have chronic inappropriate inflammation from eating inflammatory foods, there's a huge uh, association between those things and having heart disease, heart attack, stroke. Uh, and, and even in control research, the people who are eating diets that cause their blood sugar and their insulin and their levels of inflammation to elevate, those are the people who are at risk of having a heart attack and smokers, of course, that, that research is pretty clear as well. It's not people who are eating saturated fat and, and cholesterol. That's not who's having the heart attacks. 